Hi all, let's talk about how I cleared SC900 exam in just three days. We're going to talk about the exam, my experience with the resources and timeline, and also exam cram, that is things you must remember. About the exam, exam name is SC900, which is Microsoft Security Compliance and Identity Fundamentals. The category is fundamental exam, and there is no expiry date for the certification. So I got 46 questions. All were multiple choice questions, drop down to complete a sentence, match combination and true false kind of questions. And there are 45 minutes to do it. The question was not lengthy. There were pretty quick small question and I was done in almost 30 minutes. There was no lapse and as far as the cost is concerned, it's $99 for this exam. About the discount, there is no direct discount available at this exam compared to some other fundamental exam where you can get exam voucher by microsoft free training it is not available in this case also it is not covered in the ignite challenges but if you're a student you can get some discount i have another video for that which i will tag it for your information and also keep an eye stay tuned subscribe and as and when if any discount becomes available i'll make sure that is uploaded to this channel so subscribe to stay up to date you know talking about the preparation and timeline as i mentioned i was able to finish this exam in three days so I'll go through the step-by-step -step process, main preparation and high level understanding. For that, we have two options. Either we go through Microsoft Learn or I created a YouTube course, which I'm going to show you, which is two hour course and it covers all the topics as per the exam. Let me show you both the things and then we'll go to next step. So this is where you get Microsoft Learn details. So it is SC900 and if you scroll down, you will see the skill set covered here and these are the learning path. Here we have the details which Microsoft have provided. You can see there are different sections. You can go to each section and then you can go through the subtopics around that. So this is one way of going through that. And second option is, uh, is as I was mentioning, I have a two hours free YouTube course created, which uh, let me show you that. So this is the course here. All the four sections of the exams exam are covered and in each section, the subsection are covered and it is a pretty well structured information as you can see on the top you will see the main section on the left hand side you will see the main topics under that subsection for example in this security methodology zero trust methodology so that way it is very well structured and easy to remember and things which you need to focus those are emphasized this is divided into four parts as shown on the right hand side i'll put a link for this course and you can check it so i showed you both the methods and uh, you can spend four to five hours if you're going through that course i think you go slow and uh, try to remember things pause it and try to remember the thing and then practice test if you do that course thoroughly you may not need practice test at all because it is pretty straightforward exam but uh, if you really want to do and just to check it where you stand you can take any one practice test maybe from viz lab etc and you should be easily able to get uh, more than 80 percent or so after that keep an hour to revise the content for things to remember cram etc note down what you need to remember and go through that so put an hour for that lab practice on the portal it's totally optional this is a fundamental exam then there is no test needed for the lab but if you want to try it out put an hour for that and the exam itself which is 45 minutes exam but we are keeping an hour so it's eight to nine hours of uh, work where two hours are optional practice test and lab so that's that's pretty much it is and if you are doing it on a weekend or so then you can study for four to five hours and then another four five hours uh, you need another day so that's how i was able to do it in three days like in first day i completed the course and the main preparation then i divided the other activities in the next two days like around two three hours per day to get this done now i'm going to talk about the exam cram the things which you must remember based on my experience from the exam what are the things which you cannot get away without remembering them let's get through that quickly so you will see a lot of things like this security methodology what is zero trust model trust no one verify everything zero trust guiding principle so there are three guiding principles there is no way but to remember this there are six foundation pillars identity devices application data infrastructure network 
so you got to remember this by heart and then you might have seen this if you have done some other certification on azure but this talks about the shared responsibility model so you need to remember that then these are very important common threats data breach versus dictionary attack what is ransomware malware disruptive attack which is ddos so you got to know uh, what each of these mean basic definition should be good enough i'm not going to go through all of this you need to know what is the difference what is different kind of uh, common threats are there other common threats what is worm what is trojan what is root kits exploit so this kind of uh, things you need to remember now on encryption basic definition of encryption and what is symmetric or asymmetric what is the difference between them for example in which case we used a public and private key that is asymmetric encryption microsoft cloud adoption framework the definition you should know like it consists of documentation implementation guidelines best practices and tool design now identity concept is important some of the things like what is identity provider how the client communicates with identity provider it's like they use security token and the server validate the security token through trust relationship so this kind of basic concept uh, you need to know for example azure ad it's an example of cloud based identity provider so you got to know that then active directory domain services what is that it store information about members of domain including devices and user verify this credential and defines their access right a server running adds is a domain controller so this definition you need to know adds does not however natively support mobile devices saas application or lines of business app that require modern authentication method so azure active directory is the next evolution of identity access management solution it provide organization with the identity as a service solution for all type of apps across cloud and on prem so this definition this differences between adds and azure active directory you got to remember those now federated services there you need to understand that what is federation and how the federation happens so there is a big thing between that is trust relationship that you need to remember now another identity concept different kind of password based attack so you need to know the definition what is password spray attack it's a attempt to match user against a list of weak password what is brute force when a lot of passwords are tested what is phishing attack what is fair phishing attack all this definition you need to know and type of risk so user risk represents the probability that a given an entity or account is already compromised very sign in risk case the probability that an given authentication request isn't authorized by the identity owner it may or may not be compromised in sign in risk but in user risk is already compromised so you need to know the definition and differences between these two now ad identity types there are four user service principal managed identity devices you need to remember those and then hybrid identities as you can see on the diagram there is a azure ad connect that connects it those kind of things you need to know and the basic definition of hybrid identity now external identity what is external identity what is the types those you need to remember self service password reset in azure ad applicable scenarios like password change password reset account unlock so you got to remember these three and what are the authentication method available for sspr mobile app mobile app code email mobile phone office phone security question so these are the authentication method you remember so password protection a definition what is password protection when it is used it is used to reduce the risk of user setting weak password and there are two different list global band password list which is maintained by microsoft and you can have a custom band password list so this you need to remember windows hello for business the key benefit of windows is that it stores pin and biometric data securely on the local device so it is never sent to external device or server that means no single collection point that an attacker might compromise that is a key benefit you need to remember that there are two configuration windows hello or window hello for business one is for personal devices and uh, windows hello for business is much more secure and it is for the official use access management capabilities under that we have conditional access signals now you need to cram what are those signals so you need to know that it could be user or group membership name location information devices application real time sign in risk detection cloud app selection user risk again no other way but to cram these entitlement management and its purpose 
that you need to know azure at access reviews again what is the definition how it helps to ensure that only the right people have access to resources so that you need to know and it can be created through azure ad access review or azure ad privileged identity management that you need to know and it can be done for both users and guests now talking about pim it is very critical it's a service in azure ad that enable you to manage control and monitor access to important resources in your organization very important to remember it it is just in time provide privileged access only when needed it is time bound approval based visible auditable so all this point you should remember now azure ddos there are two service tiers basic and standard you should remember that azure firewall what is the definition it's a managed cloud based network security service that, that protects your azure virtual network from that attacker now it has some key features it has built in high availability and availability zone and outboard outbound snet and inbound dnet to communicate with internal resources so this you need to remember azure bastion it allows developer and scientists who are working remotely direct access to the vms that you got to remember and another thing it is available for both rdp and sss connectivity to your vms from portal that is important using transport layer security so just through azure portal you can connect to your vms using this azure defender you need to definitely know the definition and again there is the scope for defender plans like all you need to know azure defender from server there is azure defender for app services for storage for sql for kubernetes for container registries for key vault you got to remember that wherever azure defender is available sanitary is important definitely you need to know the definition and all four operation areas it covers it collects data it detects previously uncovered threat investigate threat with ai and it can respond to incident with built in orchestration and automation so this four point you need to remember about azure sentinel microsoft 365 defender it is also very important and as the diagram says it connects with application endpoint identity data all four you need to remember and also the point listed here it, it is cross domain definitely you need to know that and the last point i want to highlight is 365 defender can take automated action to prevent or stop the attack that it has automated action to do this kind of key points you got to remember microsoft defender for endpoint you need to know the definition and all and also this six things shown on the diagram you need to remember those like it can help with attack surface reduction this is also very important six key privacy principle you need to know this sensitivity level the definition of course and the usage these are the six usage which is written for sensitivity level you need to remember all those now under record management some of the document could be labeled as record or regulatory record so when a content is labeled as record what happens you got to remember that like restriction are put in place to block certain activities activities are logged proof of disposition is kept at the end of retention period now if it is marked as regulatory record then it becomes even more critical for example a regulatory label cannot be removed when an item has been marked as a regulatory record the retention period can't be made shorter and the most important difference is that if the content has been marked regulatory record nobody not even the global admin can remove the label so this is a good thing to remember for the exam and there is e discovery capability of micro 365 there is co e discovery and there is advanced e discovery solution so you need to know what is the difference between those as i have shown the workflow at the bottom in the advanced e discovery workflow you add the custodian first to the case which you don't do in the co e discovery so you should know at high level what are the steps for the workflow for e discovery versus advanced e discovery workflow and this is the final piece in this cram it's about advanced audit so advanced audit help organization conduct forensic and compliance investigation by increasing audit log retention that required to conduct an investigation so if you put an advanced audit first thing you remember is you have a long term retention of audit log which could be for one year and even microsoft has the capability to keep audit for log for 10 years 
but you need to remember that it has long term retention of audit log and also second point to remember is it gives access to crucial events for investigation for example when was the mail accessed in case of email when was the mail sent when was the reply sent when were the forward happened up to that level of details it provides and third point to remember is high bandwidth access to office 365 management activity api when you are dealing with data for advanced audit you get a dedicated bandwidth to connect to microsoft office 365 management activity api so that you can access a lot of data at a very high speed so these are the things you should remember for advanced audit and with this we are done with the exam cram hope you like it if you go through this plan go through this uh, another youtube video i have put it here for your reference and go through this exam cram you should be good for the exam the exam is pretty simple and you have all the material to learn and cram when needed if you like the content hit like share and subscribe for more videos like this good luck for the exam thank you